Hey everyone, I've been using the Galaxy S22 Plus for the past few weeks, and from the second I picked up this phone, powered it on, and started using it, I realized this device is special. It's special because it's not special. Let me explain. Remember how with almost every past S-series phone from Samsung, they always had this kind of feeling to them? They were just loaded with weird gimmicks and experimental software features or even hardware features that really got in the way of the most important part of the phone experience. The experience. But this year, this phone is no nonsense. And it's very clear that Samsung has decided to focus on the things that matter most with the user experience and things that people actually want, rather than things we don't need or haven't asked for. Okay, so first up, the design. And this phone is beautiful in its simplicity. It has this gorgeous frosted glass back that hides fingerprints and scratches very well, and this beautiful greenish blue color is incredible on this device. And flipping it over, we have this beautiful 6.6 inch 1080p 120Hz display. It is actually a flat display with symmetrical ultra slim bezels all around, and it looks incredible, almost impossible how thin those bezels are. And there's no chin or forehead, it's 100% symmetrical, and it looks stunning. And a very important but underrated feature of smartphone design is how it actually feels in your hand. And this phone feels incredible. It actually is one of the best feeling Samsung phones I've used in a long time. It feels premium and well balanced, and the edges feel soft and smooth. It's a phone you want to hold that you just don't want to put down. It feels really quite nice. The display does have an ultrasonic, super fast fingerprint scanner, which I have no complaints about. It's been fast and reliable throughout all of my testing. And the actual display itself, you already know what I'm going to say. It's beautiful. Now, even though the display is only 1080p, it still looks sharp and incredibly beautiful. The colors are vibrant and stunning. It gets super bright and looks great indoors and outdoors with up to 1750 nits of peak brightness, which is pretty crazy. Whether I'm watching videos, playing games, or just scrolling around the operating system, the display looks absolutely stunning and the 120 hertz makes everything feel super smooth and fluid. There's also a small hole punch camera cutout for the 10 megapixel selfie camera. And selfies on this phone do actually look quite good. The colors are nice and accurate, they're bright, they're sharp. I have no complaints with this selfie camera. And the front facing camera shoots 4K video up to 60 frames per second, and you're hearing the microphone quality as well right now. Some other pretty cool features, this front facing camera actually has autofocus as well, which most smartphones don't actually have autofocus in their selfie cameras. It's good to keep you sharp and in focus all the time when you're filming videos, and just for photos as well, they're going to turn out crisper and clearer. It is a great feature to have. The other cool feature here is this auto framing feature just like the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. So basically, it keeps me in frame, keeps me centered at all times. So if I go over here, the camera kind of moves. If I go back, the camera kind of moves as well. It's really not as good as a Tab S8 Ultra does it, but still, it's great to actually have this kind of feature on a phone. Now, at the back of the phone, we have a 50 megapixel main camera, 10 megapixel telephoto camera with 3 times telephoto zoom, 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with 120 degree field of view, but no autofocus in this ultra wide camera like the S22 Ultra and the Pro iPhones. But despite that, photos themselves across all three cameras are actually great. Whether it's during a bright sunny day in favorable conditions or on a cloudier, snowier day, these cameras definitely do impress. From the main to the ultra wide to the telephoto, photos are beautiful. They look accurate to the scene, they're sharp, and the phone is just consistent and pretty fun to shoot with. Photos at night and in low light are pretty solid. I shot all these photos with auto night mode on, which basically means night mode will only trigger when the phone thinks it needs to. And unfortunately, often enough, it would trigger when it didn't need to, and a scene is bright enough to just shoot with the regular camera mode, and didn't trigger when it definitely needed to, and a scene was dark and needed some of that extra long exposure assistance. But regardless though, these night shots do look pretty good in terms of their sharpness and color accuracy, and accuracy to how the night actually does look. But I do actually have two small complaints about shooting photos with this phone. The first problem is there is actually a little bit of shutter lag when shooting photos with this device. So you'll tap the shutter button, it takes just a little bit longer than it should, and sometimes I've missed a shot, or if it's a bit blurry if I move too quick, or if the subject moves too quick. So I just wish they'd make the shutter a little bit quicker with this device. 
And second, I know this problem's not that big of a deal and it's pretty easily fixable, but taking photos on this phone straight out of the box, they just look way too oversaturated on this device's screen. Now, of course, when you view those photos on your computer or a different phone, or when you post them on social media, they're gonna look proper and accurate as they should to the real life scene, because the camera does take pretty accurate shots. But just on the phone's display, they do not look like how they actually should. I know it's a simple change in the settings, but it is one of those things you have to get used to. This phone also shoots 8K video at 24 frames per second, but we'll stick to talking about 4K video because that's still my preference, and also the video quality besides the resolution looks better, in my opinion, in 4K. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Samsung's video recording has gotten very good. It's right up there, basically neck and neck almost, with video coming from the iPhone Pro line. Colors are accurate, videos are crisp and full of detail, the audio recording is solid, and autofocus is consistent and doesn't jump around or lock on objects unnaturally. It looks smooth and proper. And stabilization does look a little bit weird while you're actually shooting videos, but after it's properly processed in your gallery, it looks natural and stable. I think Samsung is killing it with video recording. Night videos could use some improvement though I'd say in terms of noise and the balance of highlights and shadows, but I've been very happy with the majority of videos I've shot with this phone during the day and night. What's also a pretty important part of the camera experience on this device is that shots you take in Instagram or TikTok or Snapchat actually look as good as they would if you shot them with the regular camera app. This is something we've wanted from Android phones for a very long time, and finally, the camera quality is great. The whole Samsung cameras suck in social apps meme is pretty much over at this point. What's also over are the days of Samsung software experience being terrible and just too much because they've refined a lot with One UI. These days I'd even call One UI pleasant. It looks clean, it feels smooth, it has nice design touches in the stock apps, even down to the smallest details you might not focus on, it is a solid software experience. The gestures are super easy to understand and use on the daily, and even the ability to have the UI colors match your wallpaper's colors is small, but makes the overall software experience feel more cohesive and personal. And there's also Samsung exclusive banger features like Dex Mode, like when you plug this phone into a display it has this desktop style user interface that activates with floating windows, and just a much more desktop like UI. Now despite all the improvements that One UI has made, it's really of course not for everyone, but for me personally, it's gotten much better than past years and I actually enjoy using it. It's also pretty sweet that you get 4 years of big software updates like the big Android versions and 5 years of security updates, so no longer do you buy a Samsung phone and after like a year or two, it's stale, it's outdated. You get software updates now, so that's pretty good. And y'all know I don't like doing benchmarks and all the graphs and numbers and all that nonsense, but basically for performance, I'll summarize it down to this. You will be very impressed with how this device feels and performs on a daily basis. With the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1 processor combined with 8 gigs of RAM and the 120Hz display, this phone absolutely flies in daily usage. It feels ridiculously fast and smooth. Whether you're just opening up apps, switching between apps and multitasking, using apps in split screen or floating windows, or throwing on a game from the Google Play Store or with Xbox Game Pass or Stadia, every area of this phone feels incredibly fast. There's virtually no lag on this device and it feels so quick. Now I haven't tested out the smaller S22, but the S22 Plus has decent to pretty good battery life. The phone has a respectable 4500 mAh cell, and starting most days at around 7am over the last couple weeks, I've used the phone to watch videos on YouTube, scroll around in social apps, listen to music, browse Chrome, reply to emails, shoot a lot of photos and videos, and end most days at around 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night, with around 20-30% to battery left. And that's pretty good. It's on par with the battery life I've gotten from most other flagship phones I've tested with similar battery sizes, and I'm impressed. The phone also does support 45 watt fast charging, but no charger in the box, and it also does support wireless charging and fast wireless charging, as well as reverse wireless charging, which for charging up other friends' phones is a nice trick, and can be handy in a pinch at times, but whenever I actually use this reverse wireless charging feature, it's usually to charge up a pair of Qi wireless earbuds or other small Qi wireless charging accessories. Not too much more. Okay, 
So when Samsung announced the event for this new lineup of S-Series devices, the tagline of the event was called the Epic Standard. And you know, this phone is definitely not epic by any means, but it is pretty standard. And that's honestly its biggest and best feature. The core things we want in a phone are nearly perfect on this device. The design is my favorite Samsung phone design ever. The display is unreal. The cameras in almost all conditions are stellar for capturing your day-to-day -day shots. The performance and battery and software are consistently good and contribute to this phone being just overall very pleasant to use. And that's honestly all I've wanted from any Samsung phone or really any smartphone I've tested. I want to be able to just pick it up and use it and nothing gets in the way. In terms of both hardware and software, I want the experience to be seamless, consistent, smooth and enjoyable. And this phone checks off all of those boxes. So basically if you're looking for a great Android smartphone or just a great smartphone in general, check out the Galaxy S22 Plus. I can 100% recommend this device. Now, Samsung? I'm talking specifically to you right now. Please do not mess this up. With the next S-Series flagship phone, the S23 or whatever it's going to be called, don't mess up the progress you've made. You've made a nearly perfect flagship phone this year, and don't throw all this progress away with some crazy gimmicky software feature or some horribly ugly design. Samsung, you finally figured it out. Now please do not mess this up, I'm telling you right and that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know what you think of the Galaxy S22 Plus in the comments down below. Would you buy this phone? Did you buy this phone? What do you think of this device? Let me know. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.